I started dancing at the age of three at the Catherine Dunham School. And um, at the age of five, uh, they, the casting people for King and I went to Chinatown looking for children. And so we all came up on the train with our mothers and we went to the audition. And there were hundreds and hundreds of children there. Um, but the next day I saw my photograph in the paper with, you know, like 300 kids. And I was in the front <laughs> and I got the show. I also uh, had to read and um, I, I didn't know how to uh, read lines, so uh, my mother had to feed them to me. But I did get the role of Princess Ying Yawalak at five. Most of the kids were professional. They went to professional children's school. They had been in shows. I don't know where they came from, but you know, I always felt like an outsider because I had never done anything. Um, but they got it, and so it was up to me to get it because I did not want to be left behind. And, you know, it, was, it wasn't intricate choreography. The thing that fascinated me was the small house of Uncle Thomas, and I, that's what I wanted to do. And I used to watch the, the girls, the dancers, warm up, and I would ask my mother to speak to them and ask them where I could learn that. And uh, Lee Theodore and Yuri Ko had gone to Martha Graham and a Balanchine school. And that really influenced my decision at five to have a career as a dancer. And I was on track. I didn't want to do anything else. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so the Richard Rogers music, Jerome Robbins dancing, th those two combined really influenced me. Being on stage was, was very easy for me. Uh, I, I learned everybody's lines. I knew everybody's uh, dances. I even learned uh, Small House of Uncle Thomas. Uh, and we put on shows upstairs on the eighth floor at the St. James Theater. And I played all the parts. And I directed everybody. So I was directing and choreographing at five. <laughs> um, I just remember seeing those people out there that made the decisions to change things or tell us what to do. And I was always interested in, in what was going on out there. And it was Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein and uh, John Van Druten. And, um, and they directed me. And I didn't know what it was to be directed by, you know, great people. I just knew that I was doing the best that I could do. And it was a big game, and I loved it. The Small House of Uncle Thomas um, was um, written by Harriet Beecher Stowe. <laughs> That's how they say it in the show. And uh, they took the novel, uh, and it's about a runaway slave, and they turned it into um, an, an Asian theme where Eliza runs away from Simon of Legree and um, it, once again, the storytelling and the dance and the combination of, of the two has really helped me in my, my choreographing and making sure that I really tell the story. The Small House of Uncle Thomas was the performance that Top Tim gives to the English that have arrived in Bangkok. And uh, it, it fascinated me because it was storytelling and then the dance. And that has influenced me also. Always tell your story in your dance. Uh, Agnes DeMille also um, had done that in Oklahoma. You know, she had uh, her, her leading characters. Um, their f she danced their fears and, and their desires uh, in, in the dream ballet. Uh, all of that, you know, it's, it's all back in my memory, but it has really influenced me in, in my choreography. Uh, the Small House of Uncle Thomas, the moves were wonderful. Um, Jerome Robbins combined um, his, his dancing with uh, the Balinese dancing, and Yuriko, who had been Martha Graham's leading dancer, uh, she was the lead. It was so fascinating being around all of this talent and, and we li lived, we say lived because that's where they put us, on the eighth floor. Um, they would allow a few of us to come down and watch. And um, I would imitate the moves. And, and finally, one of the girls became one, the Buddha. 
and uh, she could watch the choreography. And we danced it. We lived it. I loved that show. I really did. I was in King and I for two and a half years. I outgrew my costume, and I was one of the first to leave. <laughs> and that was heartbreaking. Um, Richard Rogers, I don't, I was so young. I didn't, I knew him as Mr. Rogers. He always came around, but I didn't really know who he was and, you know, what he, he had written. I knew he was the composer, but what did composers do? Um, but he was always around, and everyone loved the children, the original cast. Um, they have always kept in touch with us afterwards also, sending us cards and things like that. After three years, uh, uh, or two and a half years, being uh, in The King and I, and I walked down the street and I looked back and I said, I'll be back. Well, a few years later, there was an audition for Flower Drum Song, and so I told my mother, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go. And in the meantime, I had uh, been taking um, dance, and um, there was a big audition for children as well as dancers, and we are back at the St. James Theater in the alley again. And uh, I went in, and uh, I think they had about 10 or 15 children walk in and stand on stage, and I was eliminated, and I was crushed. And uh, as, as I was leaving, practically in tears, Mr. Rogers and Mr. Hammerstein walked into the theater, and I said to my mother, I'm going back in. They'll remember me, they'll remember me. And so um, I got past the monitor, and uh, I was put on stage again, and I heard this voice, by York Lee, step out. And it was Mr. Rogers. And uh, we started talking, and he, he said, gosh, you've grown, and I had gotten taller. And uh, the next day, I was in the papers with, with he and uh, uh, Mr. Hammerstein, and I had gotten the show. So he was responsible for me getting into Flower Drum Song. And then, because I was in the other generation, I could not be in Fantan Fanny because they were strippers. But they needed a cover uh, for Anita Ellis to sing Fantan Fanny. And I loved Pat Suzuki, and so I bought all of her albums, and I, I would sing like her all the time. And because of that, I got the cover to Anita Ellis and Fantan Fanny. Mr. Rogers gave that to me. Flower Drum Song is, is about um, the older generation um, and the young Oriental American uh, generation trying to um, break away and b become Americans and uh, the older generation just, you know, still uh, bring the old country and the old ideas to America. I'm still going through that now, so it, um, I think it's wonderful that um, that they tackled the subject. It it needed to be um, addressed. Talk about what had changed in those eight years in Broadway in musicals. Had anything changed? What was the buzz about Flower Drum Song? What was different about Broadway? Being Asian at the time was really important because we had majority of one Flower Drum Song and Susie Wong Across the Street, three shows that had Asians in it or American Orientals, whatever we were called in those days. Um, I think that was ve really very important. Um, it has changed now. Uh, we have Pan-Asian theater, but for so many years, um, there was nothing for um, uh, American Chinese or American Asian. I th I'm, ho I'm hoping that Chorus Line and my part has helped to give short little Chinese girls uh, some work. Uh, Mr. Rogers' music is definitely danceable. And uh, why? Because I, I think more than anybody else, he 
really got into the soul of of the dance and the choreographer uh, while he was writing it. Movement is is so easy with his with his music. Um, you don't have to struggle. You your body just responds to it, and uh, and. Choreo uh, choreographing is, is not always easy, but I think it's easy with his music. When you walk in a room and you have a Roger score, as a dancer and as a choreographer, I think he gets to the soul of, of, of the dancer, of the choreographer. The music allows you to be free. There's nothing that limits you with his music. You know, close your eyes for a second and think of the great choreography that you've seen that Balanchine might have done or DeMille or Robinson. Describe one of those. Just, you know, give us an example on why it's so soaring, so wonderful. The Dream Ballet in Oklahoma Every single character that she portrayed, every single movement that she gave those dancers, you live with them through her choreography. And that's what I want to do when I choreograph. I want my dancers to live the choreography, live the moment, live the scene, live the dialogue. When all of those elements are in place, the audience breathes with what's happening on the stage, or they stop breathing, hopefully, and that's what we want them to do. We want them to just live and breathe with us every single second.